Hello guys, Mr. B here. What is up and welcome to a brand new economics video. Today we're going to be looking at the relationship between income and happiness. For many years now, economists have become dissatisfied with the level of GDP and GDP per capita as a way of comparing living standards between countries. And the Office for National Statistics in the UK began publishing well-being statistics, both economic well-being and personal well-being back in 2010. And happiness is one of these personal well-being indicators. So what the Office for National Statistics does is it asks individuals the following question. Overall, how happy were you yesterday? So overall, how happy were you yesterday? And participants are invited to give themselves a score between 0 and 10. 0 being very, very unhappy and 10 being very happy. Other countries are also measuring happiness in the same sort of way. And so economists have started to compare happiness and real GDP statistics across different countries. And what this first graph does here is it shows a cross-country comparison between the level of happiness on the y-axis, which is between uh, 0 and 10, and the level of real GDP per capita on the x-axis. So what we notice here is that for countries with a relatively low GDP per capita, between, say, 0 and 20,000 US dollars per capita, the relationship between GDP per capita and happiness is fairly robust. It's a positive relationship, and this is what you would expect. So as the level of real GDP goes up, level of real GDP per capita goes up, the level of happiness also goes up. So as countries begin to lift themselves out of poverty, um, you can imagine that they become much, much happier. Perhaps they also become able to buy more luxury goods, which give them utility. Perhaps they are able to afford a foreign holiday for the first time again, which gives us utility, which gives us satisfaction. However, once we go beyond a certain level of GDP per capita, around 20,000 US dollars per capita, the relationship seems to break down. So the line of best fit on this line, as you can see, becomes uh, much, much flatter. It's a non-linear relationship between happiness and real GDP per capita. And I think this is best exemplified by looking at the United States and Mexico, which are pointed out on the graph. So America has won three times, or just about three times, the GDP per capita of Mexico, and yet the happiness scores are very, very similar. So this has prompted some economists to conclude that once countries get developed or relatively wealthy, the relationship between income and happiness breaks down. So as countries get richer, they don't get happier. So the starting point for studies of the relationship between happiness and real GDP per capita can really be traced back to a 1974 paper by an economist called Easterlin. And he made the following three observations, which have become known as the Easterlin paradox. So number one, at a point in time within countries, rich people are happier than poor people. Number two, rich, rich societies tend not to be much happier than poor societies, as we've just seen, especially beyond a certain level of income. And number three, as countries get richer, they do not get happier. Now, these observations don't make sense when you put them all together, and hence this, these observations have become known as a paradox, the Easterland paradox. Now, we can partially, at least partially, resolve this by just thinking about numbers. So if you take a country like Nicaragua, which is a poor country, it has a stated level of happiness, average level of happiness, of 6, 6 out of 10. Now, Nicaragua being a poor country, you can imagine that uh, over a period of time, maybe the next 15 years, possibly the next 20 years, then Nicaragua's GDP per capita might well double. But well, its happiness score can't double because it already has a score of 6 and, of course, you can't get a happiness score that is more than 10. So it may well be that a given increase in happiness is associated not with a given increase in the level of real GDP per capita, rather a given percentage increase. So if you want to raise your happiness score by 1, maybe you have to raise your real GDP per capita by a certain percentage, not by a certain level in terms of dollars. So maybe you've got to raise your GDP per capita by maybe 40% or 50% rather than $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 and so on. Now this next slide is really for extension purposes only. 
and uh, leads you to understand something called logs. Uh, if you don't, you can skip this slide. But if you uh, have studied AL or maths and you know what logs are, then you can listen on for about the next 30 seconds and take a look at the following slide. So what I've now done here is converted the x-axis into the log of real GDP per capita rather than just the level of real GDP per capita. And we can now see that we've re-established the relationship between happiness and real GDP per capita. We now have a linear relationship. So even for richer countries, the happiness score continues to rise as real GDP per capita rises, or at least as the log of real GDP per capita rises. We still haven't really resolved the paradox, though, because we still have points one and three that uh, still don't make sense. So Iselin himself attempted to resolve the paradox by talking about the relative income hypothesis. So what he thought was that we actually measure our living standards in terms of how we compare to those around us, not our income in absolute terms. So as everyone gets richer, overall levels of happiness won't increase because people don't feel richer in relative terms. Even if they're richer in absolute terms, they're not richer in relative terms. And we should also point out that the data that we've been looking at is in the cross section at a point in time, we're looking at happiness versus real GDP per capita at a point in time. And what we would really like to know is what happens to happiness over time within one country as a country gets richer. So what we need is what we call some time series data, not cross-sectional data. And when we look at the time series data, actually the data is rather mixed. So for China, China's happiness has risen as its income per capita has risen. But in India, the opposite has happened. The uh, happiness has actually fallen in the last 10 years as India has got richer. So what I did was I took some data from the Office for National Statistics for the UK, uh, some time series data looking at the index of real household disposable income on the y-axis now, and the average ratings of happiness on the x-axis. And we can see that barring a little blip around sort of late 2015, early 2016, there does appear to be a positive relationship between happiness and real household disposable income over time for the UK. So again, it's, it does appear when we look at this time series data, at least for the UK, and this is only for one country and it is for a short period of time, but it does appear that we have a positive relationship after all between income and happiness. So as ever to finish with, just some evaluation points. We've already noted the problems in measuring happiness uh, as a score out of 10 when countries that are quite poor are rating themselves with a happiness score of uh, say six like Nicaragua. Uh, if their GDP per capita doubles, then there's no way that the happiness score can double because the maximum is 10. Um, secondly, other factors affect happiness, not just income. And the Office for National Statistics publishes a range of measures of personal and national well-being. So it could be that factors that affect happiness might include uh, health, physical and mental health, what we do, where we live, whether we're in a relationship, um, our personal financial situation, such as how much debt we're in, the quality of the environment, and many, many other factors. Thirdly, can people actually be trusted in measuring their own happiness? Uh, so when you say to somebody overall, how happy were you yesterday? Can we trust the data? Number four, cultural differences might make international comparison difficult. So uh, some economies or some cultures, maybe uh, people in some countries tend to be uh, more positive and maybe they uh, overemphasize uh, how happy they are. So possibly uh, an example could be the United States of America of an economy where uh, happiness statistics might be slightly overestimated and how happiness is regarded in different countries might be a factor as well. Some, some countries value happiness more highly than others and some, some actually uh, think of happiness in a different way to other countries. So that could make international comparison very difficult. And finally, of course, we are here just looking at the relationship between two factors on a graph and we're assuming that income determines happiness. It could, of course, be the other way around. Happiness determines income. Maybe people earn more income because they are 
because they are happier they're they're more satisfied with life or their their mental well-being is better and that actually means that they're more capable of earning higher incomes so the causation could be the other way around okay guys i hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe to the channel if you're new to hear and see plenty more economics content and i'll see you next time